Hello and welcome to Sudoku. This is another video in LLD series. In this video, we are going to talk about how do we assign different responsibilities to the classes that we have first designed in the class diagram in the previous video. If you have not checked out the previous video, please go check it out where we have taken a particular use case of a driving school application and we have drawn the class diagram for that uh, particular problem. Now, today we will understand what are the different class relations and also how do we assign different responsibilities to those different classes. So let's get started. Classes have to interact and depend on other classes in order to fulfill the use cases of a problem. Once we have designed what are the classes in our system or how we can represent our system using classes, the next step is to figure out the relationship between those two classes or multiple classes and what are the different responsibilities of each and every class. Let's start with the relations first. Primarily, there are two kinds of relationships that any two classes can have. Either that relationship could be has a relation or it could be is a relation. Has a relation sometimes can also be considered as composition or aggregation, which we will just see in detail what those two different terms means. Let's take the class diagram that we have drawn and understand the relationship between a customer and a credit card. A customer can have a credit card. But in the system, a credit card cannot exist without the customer. If there is customer, then only there will be credit card. Otherwise, credit card alone does not have any existence if there is no customer. So customer has a credit card. This is a composition relationship, which is uh, shown using this uh, solid uh, diamond uh, arrow, uh, in, as you can see in the diagram. Now, think about uh, the class card and different car lessons that can be added to the card. Now, one card can have more than one class lessons. So, we can show the cardinality as 1 is to n, like one card can have multiple lessons. But if you think about it, multiple lessons can exist even without the card. Even though there is no card, then also there is existence of lessons because even if people are not ordering for classes, uh, they are not going through web interface, still the classes exist and they can also manually go to the center and uh, book classes. So that's why existence of classes does not depend on existence of card. So this is called aggregation and it is another type of has a relation. Now, second relation that we have talked about is is a relation. So, is a relation usually points to the inheritance. Let's say, right now we have just written one class, lessons. Now, let's say there are multiple type of lessons. There are parking lessons and there are driving lessons. In that case, we, we are going to structure these classes in a way that a uh, parking lesson will be a type of lesson class or is a lesson class and driving lesson is also a type of lesson or is a lesson class so basically lesson class will have two children parking lesson and driving lesson and parking and lesson driving lesson will be a type of lesson which we depict using is a relationship or inheritance so this is another kind of relationship that can exist between different classes we are going to talk about inheritance and polymorphism in upcoming videos but for the sake of understanding different relations i have used this example here now these relations are not very hard and fast there can be uh, a relation that can exist between any two classes which is not a is a or has a relation for example we have credit card class and we also have a payment class so credit card actually creates a payment the payment is not composed of credit card and also payment is not a type of credit card but actually there is a relation that credit card is creating a payment or making a payment. So that kind of association, we have just have to think about the real world and model accordingly. Now that we understand the relationship between different classes, now let's try to understand how do we assign the responsibility to every class. Let's start with a simple uh, use case of card. As you know that any card can have lessons we can add lessons or items uh, to the particular card here in this case there is nothing as items there are only driving lessons that we can add to the card for us to book any lesson so naturally card has to expose a method which allows you to add a particular lesson to a to the card so that method would be called add lesson and that has to be exposed by card card class 
another method that card has to uh, expose or that would be used uh, for making payment is that we should know what is the total value of the card apart from uh, knowing what are the total items in the card or lessons in the card we ha also have to know what is the total amount or value of that card so again the card has to expose a function get total amount or get final amount which internally will go through all the lessons that have been added to the card and add the prices of, of all those lessons and give us a total so these two are the methods that card should expose if you think about it do you think add lessons to the card or get total amount uh, method these should exist somewhere else in any other class if you think so try to reason why it should exist in another class and not in the card class now coming to the lesson class each lesson would have some kind of fees attached to it so to calculate or to find out the fees for that lesson we will have a getter method in the lesson class like get fees if you think about it there can be certain discounts that can be applied to certain lessons now does the calculation of those discount sits in the lesson class or the calculation of the discount sit in the card class this is an exercise for you to figure out where this get discount method or where the calculation of discount should sit when while assigning the responsibility of different classes uh, of different classes to their methods now let's take another scenario about checkout how the checkout happens in order for a customer to check out the customer first should have an order now in order to create an order what all data you need you need customer you need card and you need the payment so we have understood how the customer is going to add lessons to the card how the customer is going to create a payment so we have all this data now actually the checkout has to happen so if you think about it whose responsibility is is it to check out is it customer's responsibility or the card's responsibility or the payment's responsibility let's take a wild guess and let's put the checkout method in the card now if you put the checkout method in the card the card would have to know about the credit card and now customer cl class knows about the credit card and shopping card class also knows about the credit card we can sense here that something is wrong here instead of that if we pick up the checkout method and put in the customer class where customer class already knows about credit card and now customer knows about card also so this one class has the knowledge of every other class but still the card class is safe the credit card class is safe these classes do not know about the customer class so this way we have tried to reduce the coupling and hence we assign the responsibility of checkout to customer class once again all of this can get quite confusing and hence every time you are trying to assign responsibility or create methods in classes we follow some principles which are known as solid principles which we will discuss in upcoming videos but here just for the thumb rule try to make sure that the objects and classes do not know a lot about each other and the passing of messages from one class to another can be reduced as much as possible and the information can be hidden as much as possible now this whole concept where i am repeatedly talking about hiding the information lowering the coupling actually boils down to the concepts of abstraction and encapsulation if we think about the definition of abstraction we are usually taught in colleges that when we know about a fan or we when we just switch on the button of a fan we do not know how the current is getting passed how the machine in the fan is working we just get the fan running that is abstraction so basically you have the knowledge of executing something customer class has the knowledge of invoking make payment method but customer class doesn't have the knowledge how make payment method is carried out internally similarly card has a method of getting price of a particular lesson but card does not know how internally the lesson class is calculating the price is it implementing the discount there or what is happening this is how we implement the abstraction in object oriented classes and the implementation of abstraction is actually called encapsulation now again uh, this line can sound confusing what i mean to say is encapsulation is hiding the information as much as possible and the act of doing this by representing your classes and objects in a way that they do not know about the details of each other is called encapsulation and applying this concept in code is actually an implementation of the concept of abstraction so again to revise this and so that you understand this in and out think about which class should have the responsibility of calculating the discount of on a particular lesson should it be the lesson class or should it be the 
cart class which is calculating the total amount that has to be paid by the customer if you try to work through this exercise by understanding the concepts that i have just explained and the examples that i have just explained you might be able to apply the concept of encapsulation uh, in a, in a right way and you will get to the right answer so this was all about different class relations and assigning responsibilities to different classes using the concepts of encapsulation and abstraction in the upcoming videos we will talk about other object oriented concepts like polymorphism and inheritance and how we can use those concepts to build much robust object oriented code till then take care see you in the next video